Hello, welcome you all to my Advanced Learning Channel. In today's session, our topic is endodontics pulp and microbiology. Dental pulp, it is a soft mesenchymal connective tissue, and it is derived from cephalic neural crest. That is ectomesenchymal type. Constituents of pulp is 75% of water and 25%. Organic and water soluble in organic materials. Pulp matrix. Pulp matrix usually has fibers, and uh, these fibers are type 1, type 3, and type 5 collagens. Type 1, it provides tensile strength. Type 3, it provides elasticity. And type 5, this is also a typical mesenchymal tissue. In pulp, ground substances are made up of protein glycans. These retain water to form gel and keep calcium ions in solution. Total pulp volume in permanent teeth is 0.38 cc and the mean being 0.02 cc per teeth. There are two types of pulp, coronal pulp and the radicular pulp. This coronal pulp occupies the pulp chamber. There are pulp horns which are protrusions of the pulp and these extends into the cusp of the teeth. These pulp horns get diminished and the coronal pulp decreases in volume due to the secondary dentine formation. This is often the result of continued masticatory trauma. This coronal pulp constricts at the cervical region and it continues as radicular pulp. The radicular pulp follows the root canal pattern. The radicular pulp extends from cervix down to the apex of the tooth. Molars and premolars exhibit multiple radicular pulp. Molars and premolars have two or three roots. So they exhibit multiple radicular pulps and it is fibrous and it protects the neurovascular bundle. This radicular pulp decreases in volume with age. This is due to continued dentinogenesis. The pulp is passing through the apical foramen may be reduced by continued cementum formation. Now apical foramen, the size of apical foramen and maxillary teeth is approximately 0.4 mm and in mandibular teeth it is 0.3 mm. This apical foramen, it is largest in the palatal root of maxillary teeth and in the distal root of mandibular teeth. Next is apical delta. There are two or three apical foramens which are split by cementum or dentine and they form the apical delta. Now pulp dentine complex, dentinal tubule composed of dentinal fluids and the process of odontoplast that respond to noxious stimulus together constitutes the pulp dentine complex. Dentine has the mineralized connective tissue of the tooth and it forms the hard portion of the dentine pulp complex. Dental pulp Dental pulp is the soft tissue that maintains the vitality of the dentine. Dentine contains the multiple closely packed dentinal tubules and there are odontoblasts which are located in the dentine. The length of odontoblasts in the tubules is 0.1 to 1 mm. Now comes to development part. This pulp during the 8th week of intrauterine life, there is condensation of mesenchyme under the enamel organ and dental papilla is formed. This dental papilla controls the morphology and type of the tooth to be formed. This dental papilla shows extensive proliferation of the cells and have high vascularity. There are well organized capillaries. They are found at the beginning of dentinogenesis. Rim of enamel organ that is inner enamel epithelium and outer enamel epithelium forms the cervical loop. This root formation is carried by the proliferation of cells at the cervical loop. This dental papilla retains the ability to form dentine throughout life. Now see the, let's see the cell types in the pulp. These are odontoblasts, fibroblasts, undifferentiated mesenchyme cells, macrophages, accessory cells like T-cells, dendritic cells, blood vessels and nerve axons. This morphologically pulp has four zones. Odontoblastic layer, this is the single outermost layer, cell free zone, cell rich zone and the pulp proper. First is the odontoblastic layer. That is single outermost layer. Single layer outlining of pulp forms the odontoblastic layer. Histologically, it appears 3 to 5 layer thick, which has pseudo stratified palisade. Odontoblasts are principal secretory. These secrete dentine. Odontoblasts also secrete collagen fibers, mainly of type 1 and type 5. 
एसिड एंड अल्कलाइन फॉस्फोटेज प्रोटीन सेलोप्रोटीन एंड फॉस्फोरिन नेस्टिन दिस नेस्टिन स्टोलॉजिकल कंपाउंड फॉर डेंटीन प्रेजेंस नेक्स्ट वन इज सेल्फ फ्री जोन और जोन ऑफ वेल इट हैज अथ ऑफ फोर्टी माइक्रोमीटर नॉट ऑलवेज प्रेजेंट इट इज एबसेंट इन द यंग पल्प इट कंटेन्स कैपिलरीज अनमाइलिनेटेड नर्व फाइबर्स एंड साइटोप्लाजमिक प्रोसेस ऑफ फाइब्रोब्लास्ट थर्ड वन इज द सेल रिच जोन हेयर द मोस्ट न्यूमरस सेल्स ऑफ द फाइब्रोब्लास्ट and fibroblast this split type 1 and type 3 collagen they also contain undifferentiated mesenchymal stem cells vascular supply is extensive next is the pulp proper it resembles a loose connective tissue and it contains cells large blood vessels and nerve fibers in pulp antigen presenting cells are normally present at the periphery and they migrate to the center of the pulp during inflammation b lymphocytes are absent in pulp and tg suppressor lymphocytes are present mast cells are absent in normal pulp but these mast cells present in inflamed pulp now let's see the blood supply of pulp maxillary artery supplies the pulp and this comes in the form of inferior and superior alveolar artery and vein it is organized into large central vessel large venule and one to two arterioles with rich superficial plexus of capillaries these are important for maintaining living cells like odontoblast and for regulating fluid excess matric fluid is removed by lymphatics there is continued formation of cementum at apical foramen which leads to the occlusion of the opening the walls of the pulp vein are first affected by cemental constriction there is vascular congestion which may occur and it leads to necrosis of the pulp so with continued cementum formation uh, there is vascular congestion and which leads to necrosis of the pulp rate of oxygen consumption of odontoblast that is approximately 3.2 resting rate of blood flow in pulp is 15 to 60 ml per minute blood flow is more at the periphery of the pulp and less at the center average capillary density of pulp is 1400 interstitial fluid volume is 0.6 ml per gram wet pulp and normal intrapulpal pressure is 10.2 mm mercury in inflammation intrapulpal pressure increases up to 30 to 45 mm mercury now let's study the innervation of the pulp so second and the third division of trigeminal nerve they provide pulp sensory innervation to the pulp of maxillary and mandibular teeth there are afferent fibers which are sensory these are of two types a fibers and c fibers these a fibers are myelinated fibers and c fibers are unmyelinated these a fibers are further of types a delta and a beta fibers there are autonomic fibers that those are efferent fibers and these are of sympathetic division these sympathetic nerves these are forming around the arterioles and arise from the superior cervical ganglion there is nerve plexus of rashkov sensory nerve fibers that originate from inferior and superior alveolar nerve innervate the odontoblastic layer of pulp cavity and these nerves enter the tooth through apical foramen as myelinated nerve fibers they branch to form sub odontoblastic nerve plexus of rashkov which is separated from the odontoblast by a cell free zone of veil in addition to sensory nerve sympathetic nerve bundles also enter the tooth to innervate the blood vessels fibers are concentrated in plexus beneath the odontoblastic layer that is sub odontic or rashkov's plexus the fibers may extend into dentinal tubules these are most concentrated at pulp horns or in areas where there is undergoing repair there are afferent fibers so these are sensory fibers and they are of two types myelinated a fibers and myelinated c fibers first is a beta fibers a fibers are of two types a beta and a delta a beta fibers these are very less in number they have pressure and touch reception their conduction velocity is 30 to 70 meters per second they have very less threshold to non noxious stimulus and these are 40% of myelinated fibers next is a delta fibers these are mainly located at the pulp dentine border in the coronal portion of the pulp and are these are concentrated in the pulp horns these are myelinated type they are of approximately 90% of a fibers their conduction velocity is 2 to 30 meters per second they receive pain touch 
temperature sensation and they are especially of fast short and sharp pains these eight delta fibers are sensitive to ischemia they are stimulated by hydrodynamic stimuli eight delta fibers are stimulated in electric pulse testing they have larger diameter high conduction speed diameter of eight delta fibers is 1 to 6 micrometer they are around 2008 delta myelinated axons and they conduct sharp and piercing pain next is c fibers these are located in the core of the pulp or the pulp proper and they extend into the cell free zone underneath the odontoplastic layer these are unmyelinated type they form the 80 percent of the efferent sensory fibers their conduction velocity is 2 to 30 meters per second and they have higher threshold value these c fibers conduct slow dull throbbing pain they are stimulated by direct pulp damage and these c fibers are sensitive to anesthetics these c fibers do not respond to electric pulp testing they have higher threshold and a strong current is needed to stimulate them these c fibers may survive in presence of hypoxia which may explain pain sense during preparation for the root canal of a necrotic pulp these c fibers are polymodal and they respond to capsaicin and inflammatory mediators like histamine and bradykinin. There are around 500 C-type unmyelinated axons and they conduct dull ache in response to thermal, mechanical and chemical stimuli. They are autonomic efferent fibers. They are neurogenic modulation of microcirculations and they regulate dentinogenesis. They are non-myelinated type. Only sympathetic autonomic fibers are found in the pulp. Parasympathetic fibers do not innervate the tooth pulp. These sympathetic fibers appear with blood vessels at the time of development. The sympathetic axons of the dental pulp have their cell bodies in the superior cervical ganglion. Let's start with endodontic microbiology. First is what is infection? Organism damage the host tissues and produce clinical signs and symptoms. What is pathogenicity? This is the capacity of the organism to produce a disease within the host. Virulence, degree of pathogenicity in a host is known as virulence. The stages of development of endo infection is, first there is microbial invasion, then there is colonization, then these microbes multiply and they have pathogenic activity. What is the portal of entry of microorganisms? These bacteria invade through dentinal tubules and these invasion occur more rapidly in the non-vital teeth. The most common source of entry of microorganisms is caries. Caries is the most common source. There are exposed dentinal tubules and this vital pulp is very resistant to microbial invasion. But necrotic pulp, they are rapidly colonized. Microbes enter when there is pulp exposure. Microbes may invade through fractures of a tooth or there are cracks or there are lateral or accessory canals. When the microbes are carried in blood to area of inflammation, that is through blood circulation. This is known as anachoresis and their infection is established. What is the pulp reaction when the microbes invade the pulp? First is caries without pulp exposure, there is chronic pulp response. Next is caries with pulp exposure, that there can be acute or chronic pulp response. When there is pulp exposure, there can be pulp abscess, necrosis, and periradicular inflammation can be there. When, when there is pulp exposure without microorganism, there is minimal inflammation. So there are types of endodontic infections. There is intraradicular infection. These are dominated by the anaerobic bacteria. This intraradicular infection is of primary intraradicular infection, secondary intraradicular infection. Then there is persistent intraradicular infection. So in primary intraradicular infection, it is the initial infection. So all types of microbes are there. The most common microorganism in primary endodontic infections are anaerobic gram-negative bacteria. They include Fusobacterium, Treponema, Dialester, Perfiromenas. That is P. endodontalis or P. gingivalis. Next is Prevotella. Facultative gram-negative bacteria are Neisseria and Haemophilus. There are gram-positive bacteria also. Anaerobic type is Actinomyces, Eubacterium, and Peptostreptococcus. And facultative gram-positive bacteria are Enterococcus fecalis, Dactobacillus, and Streptococcus. These porphyromonas, that is P. endodontalis and P. gingivalis, 
they are isolated from the acute infection. Next, there is secondary interradicular infection, and this secondary interradicular infection occurs during the time of treatment, between the appointments, or even after the root canal filling. Here, microbes that are found are streptococci, and in root canal treated teeth, there are Enterococcus faecalis present. These Enterococci have shown to be relatively resistant to calcium hydroxide and they occur in high frequency in retreatment cases. The third one is persistent interradicular infection. These are called recurrent infections. These are involved as a part of primary or secondary infection. Microbes which are present in primary or secondary infection can be found in persistent intraradicular infection and these are of type gram positive facultative or anaerobic bacteria. Fungi can also be found. Next is a extra radicular infection. This extra radicular infection is characterized by microbial invasion and proliferation of inflamed periradicular tissues and it and most invariably a similar to intraradicular infection. This extra radicular infection they can be dependent or independent of interradicular infection. Most common form of extra radicular infection dependent on interradicular infection is acute apical abscess. This acute apical abscess it is dependent on interradicular infection. And the most common extra radicular infection that is independent of interradicular infection is apical actinomycosis. That is caused by Actinomyces. Microorganisms detected in root canal treated teeth associated with persistent apical periodontitis are Enterococcus faecalis, and these are mostly prevalent. They have more chances. Others are Pseudoremi vector, Alectolecticus. Next is Propionio bacterium. Next one is Philly vector, Allosis. Another is Dialester, Pneumocentes, and the Streptococcus species. So these are more prevalent in root canal treated teeth. Next comes the virulence factors. So virulence factors are they are increasing in infected canals, and this virulence caused by fimbriae, capsules, extracellular vesicles, virulence factor lipopolysaccharides, enzymes, low molecular weight, ammonia and hydrogen sulfide, short chain fatty acids and polyamines. So this fimbriae has synergistic relationship between bacteria. These capsules are resistance against phagocytosis. These extracellular vesicles, these affect host cells and protect bacteria against antibodies. Lipopolysaccharides, these are endotoxins and induce periradicular inflammation. Enzymes are the spreading factors and with proteases, they neutralize immunoglobins. Low molecular weight products like ammonia and hydrogen sulfide, these are bacterial nutrients. There are short chain fatty acids like propionic butyric and isobutyric acids. These fatty acids affect phagocytosis and the production of inter interleukin 1 and intracellular changes are affected. Polyamines, putrescine, cadaverine and spermidine these are also virulence factors. And that's all for today. Do visit our channel Eduinfi Learning. Subscribe and like our videos. Visit our website needpg.eduinfi.com. Thank you all.